from Edmonds as part of uh, a very solid looking England bowling attack. 145 for six at the close of play, Australia on the second evening. And disappointment for them after their bowlers did so well. But England, nothing but satisfaction as far as they were concerned. Ian Botham, two for 50 and 11 overs. Edmonds has two for 28 and a wicket each to Ellison and Embury. And Taylor also bowled well, although he's wicketless on that list. The situation for Australia at the moment is that they're 319 behind at 145 per play now with just one run out. It's the second ball of the third over. Ian Botham is the bowler and the young Queenslander Greg Ritchie is taking strike. A short delivery and Elliot counted it for another Australian. But, uh, very good shot there by Richard, but so easily hold out at uh, mid on. They just can't resist this stroke. Again, completely uncontrolled and very fortunate to beat the mid on fieldsman. Well, can't be as serious as all that, surely. Down the wicket, uh, took a fair old chance there. If there wasn't a spin, he was trying to work it against it. And they'll come back for three runs. <laughs> One fifty comes up on the board. been something of a battle for Australia taking 335 balls received to post 150 up there that's made for it outside the leg stump no deep square leg perfectly safe good shot there from Murray Bennett so the first boundary of the morning takes Bennett on to six a total of 158 Botham's uh, five overs this morning have only cost uh, six runs. Replaced by Richard Ellison. Up to 20 yesterday. Bold, uh, thought exceptionally well at the start of his spell. Had the ball uh, swing quite considerably. Well caught. To Robinson at point and Bennett goes. A flashing square drive. He didn't quite get over it. And it was an excellent catch by Tim Robinson just fractionally behind point. Yes, that was certainly a very good catch. Hit it pretty hard. You can see it there flashing away well to his left, above his head. And this is not the easiest ground in the world for sighting the ball against the background of spectators. And uh, he caught that and made it look pretty easy. But that's uh, pretty lucky for Bennett. He's played pretty well this morning. He's uh, been in no real trouble but uh, just got a bit too ambitious there and launched himself at it without really leaning into the shot. Just fractionally leaning back, which allowed the ball to go up in the air. Ellison now to Lawson, three slips in a gully. Fierce drives to stop out there at extra cover. Gower is in effect covering two fielding positions there, both extra cover and mid off. There's a huge gap on the offside. And that athletic dive, although allowing one run, certainly saved a further two. Here's Richard Ellison, running to Ritchie. Oh, 
Well, Greg Ritchie has gone on to be top scorer in this innings. Not a good performance from the young right-hander from Queensland. Goes on to 40. Total to 190 for seven. Taylor is coming on again at the pavilion end. He's the only one without uh, a wicket against his name. Alan Lamb again. It's been some good fielding this morning. In fact, this is um, a good fielding team. No weak links out there. Gooch, who's down in the deep, has a strong throwing arm and can catch close to the wicket. Robinson is very athletic, keeps himself extremely fit, I understand. Alan Lamb at Gully is quite brilliant. And there's Botham and Gatting, both excellent close to the wicket catches. Can field anywhere for that matter. And that's the sort of thing they pull off. And Les Taylor has picked up his first test match, or first test wicket uh, in this innings. Just what he needed to give him a little bit of confidence and uh, further to impress the selectors. This demonstrates the superhuman powers that Ian Botham was given at birth. Hands on knees. Look at that reaction. Absolutely fantastic as he plucks that out of the air. Ian Botham has a remarkable record in test match cricket with both bat and ball and also in the field in his 79th match that's his 90th catch and is he pleased about it Jeff Wilson has uh, no need to feel aggrieved at that it was a brilliant piece of cricket to give Taylor his wicket and just underlines what we were saying about the strength of the England fielding. Bertham has taken some brilliant catches, pulled off some brilliant things over the years. Three. And that brings in Craig McDermott with the Australian total 192 for eight. from uh, Craig McDermott's hip, whether it uh, was intercepted by the edge of the bat or not, as the England players uh, seem to think, is another matter. I think this was definitely a chance. Taylor getting the line just right. Looked like inside edge onto thigh pad. Edmonds takes the catch, but then the ball slips out of his grasp there it goes well I think from that replay and that angle we can say that it definitely found the edge and away goes McDermott on his way to the pavilion and uh, then back he comes inside edge thigh pad Edmund's hands, McDermott goes to the pavilion and suddenly it's a reprieve. Well, I didn't get round uh, in that little run through of the brilliant fielders to say how well Philippe Edmonds has been fielding this summer, but that is uh, just about the only blemish we've seen. He's been given the chance to make up for that now, coming on at uh, the Vauxhall end, he's going to bowl left arm around the wicket to Greg Ritchie. There's a good solid blow from uh, Craig McDermott, battling with his Queensland teammate Greg Ritchie. McDermott after that reprieve, where Edmonds dropped him. Just adds a little bit of insult by smashing the same bowler 
straight down the ground. The England captain with eight wickets down will be thinking about that follow-on decision. <laughs> He has uh, the option of making Australia bat again if they don't reach 265. And in my opinion, he can then shut the door on Australia and begin celebrating regaining the ashes. There's just a chink of light for Australia if he decides to bat again. Well taken single. <laughs> single breaks up the 200, which again a little bit of problem with the bowler. Slight collision, but I'm quite sure it was accidental. And uh, Edmonds decided now to bowl to reach with two men out. Long on under long off. It's a wicket. It, well, he's just recovered in time and got back. Turn it backing up, slipping about uh, five or six yards out of his ground. Craig McDermott ends up on his backside, slipping on this very dry strip. And a direct hit for Robinson could have caused him acute embarrassment. Turn there and hammered away square. Good shot there by Richard. Is that ball just fractionally short. Lift and turn. Edmonds there regretting that. Uh, what's to him a fairly simple chance, the first ball. Dermot received from Taylor. His uh, personal figures now two for 40. to continue. Very quickly off his mark there to get the one he wanted for 50. Well, uh, very good innings here from uh, Greg Ritchie. Very comfortably the top scorer in the Australian innings to date. And, uh, he's been in precious little trouble all the time he's been there. 125 balls. Five fours in his 50. And, uh, Rich has now gone past 400 runs in the series. Ooh. Nothing wrong with that. Beautiful uh, hit there off the back foot. Straight for four. Craig McDermott showed us at Edgbaston that he's capable of uh, excellent straight drives. This is right in the slot for him. And there's nothing wrong with that straight out of the textbook.
lovely stroke. Beautifully timed, just lent into that, stroked it through extra cover. Turning for the third. That's a big hoik. He's middled that one all right. Much more effective style than uh, we saw before. It's well over the ropes for six. That's right, that indeed is a very big hit here at the Oval. It's a long boundary out there. And uh, everything just dropped absolutely right there for McDermott. Just uh, two wickets have dropped this morning. Murray Bennett caught by Robinson off Ellison. Give the Kent Bowler his second wicket and uh, Taylor picking up his first when he had Lawson beautifully caught by both of them in the slips. Very thick and a very fast edge and magnificent head high catch. <coughs> so. Uh, all England bowlers figuring somewhere along the card. To each, to both of them, Ellison and Edmonds. Embury coming on now at uh, the Vauxhall end. And could be trouble if he hits, he's got to go. Yes. Great hesitation there. And that really was thrown away. Richard came, but then hesitated, saw Richard coming, decided to go, but if the throw was anything like good, he had to be run out. It um, was a long time before, he, in fact, he decided to go. And when he did go, it was just too late. Richie takes a single, Pertham removes his sweater. Now Gilbert has to face the England all-rounder. Gilbert is on one, 2.41 for nine. That's the end of the Australian innings. Gilbert plays on to Botham. Richie remains 64 not out. Australia all out for 241 and David Gower has the option now of enforcing the follow-on if he so wishes Gower and uh, the groundsman Harry Brin is coming across towards him there's no sign from Gower so I anticipate that uh, he'll be asking Australia to follow on and it'll be a question of Alan Border deciding which roller he might want and he's received the signal from Alan Border so Australia are to follow on Greg Ritchie finishing 64 not out in a total of 2-4-1 it was a fine performance from Ritchie who's grown in stature in every innings he's played in this test series but that basically is a disappointing scorecard so far as the Australians are concerned everyone got a bit of a start and no one other than Ritchie and perhaps Border, who was unlucky yesterday, were able to go on with a 241 the total. And uh, the bowling figures for England reflect their superiority. Both of them, three for 64, and a wicket uh, in just over six overs. Taylor, one. Ellison, two. And Edmonds, two. And John Embry, who I thought bowled very well, one for 48 from 19 overs and seven maidens. And that left the Australians 223 runs behind and it gave David Gower the option of enforcing the follow-on which uh, he did in my opinion quite sensibly and Wood and Hilditch 
once again with the Australian Open as well. They added 12. And one of the things Gao would have taken into consideration in enforcing the follow-on was the chance of some bad weather. And in fact, the rain and bad light then caused a postponement of 155 minutes, which meant uh, that play would go on to 7 o'clock. The Australians had added 12 up to that point. We pick it up now after the umpires have taken them back on the field. Taylor is coming in to Boulder Wood, and the batsman has made five. Short hooked away. Just a little bit slow picking that up initially. It's not a very easy ground to pick him up out there on the outfield. If it set off immediately, there was a half a chance he might have snuffled that. So, Graham Wood still prepared to live dangerously. This one dropping just short of Ellison. This would have been a very embarrassing dismissal for the Western Australian opening batsman. Well, Graham Wood took a single, he's down at Botham's end now, and Botham, of course, will have two men back for it. But one quite fine, and one square. And he's pulled it on. And so many played on, we've seen in this match, quite incredibly. It's another one out of Botham and the Graham Wood girls. It's 13 for one. And uh, Botham getting ever nearer to Dennis Lilly's Hall of Test Match Wickets. It's another excellent piece of bowling by Botham. Wood is stranded on the back foot, expecting the bouncer. Botham pitches it up more. And similarly with David Gilbert's dismissal, the batsman dragging it onto his stumps. Just the one man back at uh, long leg for a couple of vessels. Two short legs instead. A good delivery. Both of them really charging in and a testing first delivery for Vessels. Right up into that rib cage again. Taylor to Hildich. Oh, would you believe it? Straight into Gower's hands. Comfortable catch. Hildich looked in amazement there. Couldn't really wonder how it got there. But it did, and he's gone, and Australia 16 for two. Yeah, that you can see driving without letting his feet come forward, and the ball just lobbing nice and gently there uh, <coughs> to David Gower. A little bit unlucky picking one man out like that, but again, not a particularly good shot. So a crisis again facing Alan Border situation he's become uh, sadly for him I suppose used to over the series he's going to need a superhuman effort now from him quick look up at the uh, dark clouds which are gathering uh, over on the west side of the oval the vessels hasn't settled yet I don't think he's particularly happy about the light he's looked in the direction of Harold Bird a couple of times So he finally gets underway with a single down to third man. Edmonds are getting close at short leg. And he fairly hammered that. Reached that square leg boundary in a flash. shot's not likely to get him off for Bud Light. He certainly gave that the full treatment and uh, Phil Edmonds won't be very happy about that about two yards from the bat. In fact, he must have nearly hit him with the follow-through of the bat. Eh? <laughs> well, he didn't quite get that. He hit it away in front of square, but uh, Gow will get it. He'll take three. Very good catch by Paul Downton, going right across 
Lewis in front of first step. It went through low. Don't think that uh, Kepler Vessels will mark that down as one of his uh, finest shots of the summer. It was very, very wide. And Botham has picked up another wicket. They had a very fine catch this because I don't think it would have carried to first slip. But really, that's a pretty poor shot with Australia in the position there. That ball must have been two feet wide nearly. And you can see it would have certainly probably just fallen short of first slip. So Paul Downton making the right decision there to keep going for that one. And a pretty good catch. Both in the border. He's hit that away beautifully over Edmund's head. And uh, both of them coming around the wicket now. Just giving him the chance to assist it on its way. Willem has strike to Ellison. It's 51 for three. Doubt must be out. We were bowled by Ellison. He had the wood on Willem all the way through. Beating him outside the off stump and on the off stump with the away swinger. And then that one looked as though it either came back or went straight on. And absolutely plumb. Eleven more runs added up to the close after Willem's wicket. 62 for four. And if the first inning scorecard was disappointing at 241, what about that one? 62 for four. Hildich out for nine, Wood for six, Vessels for seven, and Wellham five, with only the skipper and the not-out batsman of the first innings, Ritchie, standing firm in the face of the England attack, which I thought was very, very purposeful out there this afternoon. Both them bowled fast, two for 25, a wicket every four and a half overs, a good strike rate again. Taylor, one wicket, Ellison one, and Embury, just the one over towards the end situation at the close of the third day Australia 161 runs behind England and only six wickets in the second ball